This conference will now be recorded. And then we have a configured Jenkins. We have seen different different settings within Jenkins. And then we have seen uh, how you can create your own job inside Jenkins, right? These were the things we discussed in the last class. And and we, uh, in fact, we created a new job in Jenkins. Uh, in the new job, what we did is we we checked out the code from Git. Uh, we first of all Jenkins authenticated with GitHub using the SSH key pair, and then it pulled the code from GitHub. And the same thing got displayed on your GUI, right? I mean, let me show you that. Let me start both Jenkins server and the AWS machine. Let me start the machines about Tom's laptop and the Jenkins server. Uh, Basil? Yes. Yeah, good morning, Basil. Uh, so, Basil, yesterday I sent one email to you. So once you have a time, please have a look. I I will check today. Uh, all the emails I will check today. Uh, sorry yeah. for the delay in responding. Yeah, I was facing some error in that. So right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can you mute? Somebody is unmute. Uh, Bharti, I don't know why this is happening. It's keep getting unmuted. Uh, probably your kids or someone. Okay, uh, so Bardi. Hello, Basil, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. So I'm trying to mute, but it's not happening. I'll come again. I'll leave the meeting. Okay, let me try to do it. Uh, okay guys so let me log into the jenkins server or you know let us go ahead and browse for the jenkins url ip address colon 8080 is the url right just try to browse and then it will take you to the jenkins prompt i am going to log in with my username and password and then you are logged in you are logged into the Jenkins dashboard and uh, in the last class we have created two jobs in Jenkins. One is for uh, building and deploying our retail project, but we didn't complete this job. We only checked out the code from Git. We are yet to create the complete pipeline. That is exactly what we are going to do. All right. So, yeah, uh, and uh, these are the things we did and we have seen, uh, you know, a quick overview about what are the things available on the Jenkins dashboard. All right, uh, so uh, let us, you know, let us start. Today we are going to discuss these topics.
we are going to talk about uh, these many topics for today one is we will complete the job right we will complete our continuous integration job rather than simply checking out the code from git we want to run uh, build the code we want to dockerize them and uh, probably you want to push them into hub.docker.com and you even want to deploy them by using docker run command or by using the kubectl command kubectl command will deploy them into kubernetes cluster while docker run command would create the manual clusters so uh, we will we will do all those things under single job and then the next thing we will talk about um, jenkins slave master slave configuration so if you have high load on jenkins server jenkins server do a lot of things right and the load can increase on the jenkins server so how you are going to manage that high load inside the jenkins server we will talk about that and then we will also talk about some best practices and after that we talk about some pipelines you know, uh, how to create some jenkins pipelines uh, without using the ui how you can make modifications to a job right uh, those things we will discuss so these are the four topics we are going to discuss for today and um, yeah uh, so we will start so let us start with the continuous integration job that we created yesterday uh, in Jenkins, so one second. All right. All right. So uh, in the last class, uh, we had done these things. We, we created a job in Jenkins. We check out the code from Git. And then what is the next thing that you might want to do? You want to build it. You want to build the in JavaScript project. You want to build the Java project. You want to dockerize the JavaScript project, then the Java project, then the Python project. And then you want to push all the Docker images to hub.docker.com. And after that, you want to run these Docker images. You want to run your software. If you want to do some testing, first you want to run the software, right? Or it is called deployment. You want to deploy your Docker images into Docker containers for further testing or whatever, right? Uh, uh, then you might want to do some testing which we will not do actually uh, i will show you some unit testing but uh, we don't do any further testing so all these things has to be coordinated under one jenkins job so that jenkins job will do the continuous integration process it will it can even monitor git for any code change that are happening any developer tom or jerry if they push any code into github jenkins can keep checking the github for any updates coming from the developers and then it can run the job right so let us create this job the first step is already done yesterday we checked down the code from git and now the next step is uh, we want to we want to uh, do other things such as uh, maven install npm install npm run build few things are pending so let us go ahead and do that click open the job and click on configure button on the left side and scroll down uh, under source code management we specified where jenkins can get the source code and we already clearly written all the details this is the github url and we added a credentials and this is the credentials that it's a private key of Jenkins. This is the credentials that Jenkins will be using whenever it want to check out the code from GitHub and which branch you are checking out. It is the development branch. I purposefully put development branch because 
uh, i want jenkins to keep checking the development branch for updates that is where my developer will keep making updates right that's why and now you come down and the, you will find something called build there are some other headings also there is something called build triggers then build environment Uh, somebody is unmute again. Bardi, I think it's. Let me try to mute from my side and see. <sighs> All right. Uh, so, uh, so there are uh, build triggers and there are build environment. We will talk about all that later. And uh, you know, there is some heading called build. That is where we will keep adding different different uh, steps. Right uh, after getting the source code. The next thing obviously you want to build it right so click on add build step over here and there are different different options if you have a maven project you can directly select this option to build using maven or if you if it is a and project you have this option to directly build using and in my case what i generally do is i just choose this option execute shell uh, that will allow you to execute some Linux commands. So whatever commands you type in here, let's say MVN install or uh, NPM install, whatever command that you type in here, Jenkins will execute it from the Linux command line. So that is what I would generally do. So the first thing, by default, you are on the right folder, wherever uh, you know uh, Jenkins will get the code from this URL and jenkins will set your current folder and you want to see that folder i can show you if you ssh to the jenkins server if you ssh into the jenkins server uh, you know that code is stored inside one place right uh, so let me ssh into the jenkins server and show you that You need to log in as the user Jenkins. Uh, remember, uh, I told you yesterday, Jenkins work under the Jenkins Linux user. And this is the home folder of Jenkins Linux user. And uh, in the home folder, you will find there is another folder called workspace. So go to the folder workspace. And inside the workspace, you will find a folder with the name of the job. There is a folder with the name test job. This is the first job that we created in the last session. And then this is the other job that we created. This is the job we are currently working on. So go to this folder with the name of the job. Sorry. And you, if you type the ls command, this is the folder. Jenkins will download the code from GitHub. The first step, so it's code management step where we insisted Jenkins to check out the code from this GitHub URL. Jenkins do check out the code from there and store them inside this folder. The folder which is inside workspace, then the name of the job. This is the folder where code will be checked out. You can see the SA frontend, SA logic, SA web app, right? The complete GitHub code. And if you want to see from the Jenkins dashboard, Yesterday, you might have already seen that. Uh, you go to that job. Okay, I will. Okay, let me show you that. If you go to that job and if you look into the build history, open this uh, build number one. Uh, we already executed this job. And uh, over here on the left side, somewhere you will find a workspace. I'm just checking. Okay, here itself. Open the job here itself. You find a workspace. I click there and automatically it will open that folder, right? The same folder what you have seen just now in the Jenkins server command line. It is the same folder that you see from the dashboard. 
all right uh, just for your information right this is only for your information so uh jenkins do check out the code and uh, once uh, jenkins check out the code you it will also set your current folder to be that location so uh, when you are building the job you know you can assume that your current pwd is nothing but the folder where you have your code so you can run the command sa front end this command will take you to the SA frontend folder. Then you can run the command uh, npm install. And then you can run the command npm run build. Right, so uh, these are the steps as you already know to uh, build your JavaScript project, the SA frontend project into a website folder a folder with the name build will get created once you executed these commands and these files can be put inside a nginx document root and you can serve it to the people so i have written all the steps necessary to uh, create the executable file for my sa front end project and then uh, so i am done here if i want i can put all the commands here itself but as a best practice you know if i want to build the java project i will go to the next step again over here there's an option called execute shell and here i would run the command sa web app and then what is the command to build the java project maven install mvn install is the command to build the java project you already know so this command will build the javascript project and i would get a build folder this command would build the maven project and it would create me a jar file python i am not building it i would directly dockerize it remember that is what we did manually also and then the next thing i want to dockerize all of them so i would use the docker build command to build all the project so i'm going to build all the project in one step that is fine if you want to create multiple steps it's absolutely fine but uh, you know uh, yeah it's fine if you put it everything in one step so first i go to the sf frontend folder and i run the docker build command docker build minus d sf frontend then um, next thing you just mentioned <coughs> that uh, the tag then put a dot uh, what this command will do is it will build the sf frontend into a docker image and then similarly next thing what i want to do is i want to go to the sa web app folder and then i want to execute the same command the image name that i want to build is sa web app and then i want to go to a logic folder and then i want to execute the docker build command hyphen t red basic or oh, yeah right so uh, so this command will build the docker images locally jenkins will build the docker image locally did we miss something jenkins want to run the docker build command jenkins user must have permission to do that right tom uh, when tom tried to run the docker command he got some permission error uh, right in the previous session and what we did is we allowed tom user to run docker command by uh, giving him permission by running some user mod command yes i have to do the same thing for jenkins user also because it is the jenkins user who is going to execute all these commands so to run the docker build command jenkins need permission so let me make sure that it has permission uh, the command is okay i got disconnected one second all right uh, we already installed docker the only thing what i want to do is i want to execute uh, this command to give permission to jenkins uh, what is the command the command is user mod uh, 
minus ag docker and then jenkins that is the command i have to run to give permission to jenkins okay with sudo right so now jenkins user can execute the docker commands right this must be done so i did that now uh, now you know otherwise when you run the jenkins job you will get an error so we have built all docker images inside the jenkins server and now it is time to push them right push all the docker images to hub.docker.com so first of all you have to log into hub.docker.com right jenkins server first you should run the docker login command so let us do that i'm going to log into docker hub and then i am going to push all the images first i should tag them and then i will push them so uh, i'm going to run another step in the build where i'm going to mention something like this first thing that i want to do is i want to tag the docker images and then i want to log into hub.docker.com so first of all you tag all the docker images how do you want to tag it under my docker id basil Varghese is my docker id and similarly i will execute the command uh, you know uh, i will tag all images uh, one by one okay all images have been tagged and now it is time to push them to docker hub and before you push you should make sure that you are logged into docker hub right otherwise you would get an error and i have this problem if i log in to docker hub if i run the docker login command this is how you log into docker hub right when you execute the docker login command it will ask you for the username and then it will ask you for the password so some interaction will appear there i don't want any such kind of interaction to be happening with one single docker login command i want to make sure that i am logged into docker hub all right so what i would do is there is some uh, argument less you know uh, interaction less command to log into docker let me try to find out docker login non-interactive something like that you can search in google then yeah automatic docker login with with a bash script right that that is probably what we need so what we can do is we can put our password you know your docker hub uh, password you have a docker id and docker hub password the password you can put inside one file and then uh, you can execute this command here you can specify the username in my case it's basil Vargis. and then uh, this this would be sufficient right uh, i'm going to do that i'm going to uh, put my password in in a file and then use this command You can also pass the arguments from the command line. I'm not going to do that. It's not really, it won't look good. So I'm sharing my, uh, I'm stopping sharing the screen. Okay. Um, I just want to save the password. So.
okay guys uh, let me share my screen again so what i just did is i created a file uh, with my docker hub password in it so there's a file that i created called uh, you know uh, what is that docker okay ls minus a the file name is a dot docker pass dot txt i created a file under the jenkins user at this location so this is the location where i have the file and i am going to run this command dot you no know, the cat command will display the password and then using a pipe symbol uh, then the then the next uh, command is docker login then you specify your username now over here you have to mention the username in my case it is basil workies so i can execute this command to login at one shot right uh, it will take this username and it will take the password from this file i have typed in my password inside this file and this is the command i will use inside my uh, inside my uh, jenkins server hello basil yeah you created that file with touch command or what uh, nano yeah using nano command i open this file and it's normal same as uh, touch command you can use to create the file on nano command to edit it it's the same same steps now you know i will be able to push it by running the docker push command So I am pushing all Docker images one by one, and and that's it. So uh, this will push all the Docker images to hub.docker.com under my account. So if you want to version it, it's up to you. You can give some version. I am simply putting latest as the version. If you want to change it, it can be changed. Right? You can tag with a different version name, and you can do that. That's also absolutely fine. So now I am going to click on the save button and it got saved and now i'm going to build it click on build now button on the left side then what happens is it would start building the job and what all things it will do it will check out the code from git it will build each project it will dockerize all the projects it will push the docker images to hub.docker.com so let's click on build now button and a build will now start which will perform all these steps one by one so right now it is running if you open it you know you can see currently it is in running state that is why here it is blinking and if you click on the console output actually you can you know see the console output what is going on right now the npm install command is going on now npm run build is going on and then you know it is running all the commands one by one and whatever you generally see on your linux console output same thing you see here and now it is uh, running the maven install and after that it will run the docker push so everything will happen everything will run one by one and at the end a docker image would be available on my hub.docker.com that is the final outcome but uh, i got some error so there is some error Let me check what is the error. Um, got permission denied while connecting to Docker. Okay. Okay. Jenkins user is unable to uh, build it. I don't know if I must restart Jenkins. Uh, after you given jenkins user the permission i believe you have to restart jenkins once uh, let me try that right you have already executed this command you had given permission to the jenkins user right 
user mod command you executed. Uh, I'm just trying to uh, test it here. Run the command Docker images. It's working from the command line, but uh, from the console, I am getting some permission error. So let me, I think I need to restart Jenkins to fix that problem. Let's try that. After giving permission to the Jenkins user, I'm restarting Jenkins. So after restarting Jenkins, it will take a little while uh, for the page to load. So we will wait. Okay, it's done. It is restarted. Now let me log in again and try to run the job. This time it should not throw me any error. Let us see. yeah it is done you can see the green color it is successfully completed all good so if i go to my uh, docker hub i would see the latest images that got pushed by jenkins so every time this job get executed this is what going to happen jenkins will push the latest code uh, i mean whatever code it received from git assuming that it is the latest code jenkins will build the latest code convert them into a docker image and save them in hub.docker.com every time i run the job this is what happened so my source code has now become a docker image which is you know which is ready to be installed uh, on a Kubernetes cluster or uh, using a docker run command. I can run these images from any places in the world because these images are available to public. I mean, not everyone in the world, but your team members who are, are the collaborators of this project, they all have access to all these images and you know, your work will continue. Your developer does not need to worry about uh, running this unit testing, building it, compiling it, creating docker images you don't have to do that it happens in an automated way so that that is what our job was all about it it will take the source code and it will it will build it from the scratch and yes if you want to run uh, docker containers you can either use the docker run command or you can use the kubectl command so we never talked about that but uh, and I'm not going to, but those who learned Kubernetes, you will understand what this means. Those who didn't learn Kubernetes, we will learn that in detail when we learn Kubernetes. So I will show you, uh, you know, I will show the project. There are some other files of the project that I want to show you. So go to our project, retail project. In the retail project, we have built all these three microservices into a docker image right and you are very clear with all those steps and there is one more folder here called resource manifest and if you open Hello, this, 
yeah yeah so in that docker hub.docker.com we all the three are not, are not updated i think sl logic uh, is not updated still when you showed the page sl logic is not updated it, it was saying it's updated two day ago so is there some problem yeah. that it's not uh, there is no problem uh, the only thing is that there is no change so oh, if, okay if the docker remains and if the hash value you know it will it will calculate the hash value of all these images that you are pushing okay. and if it is found to be same then it will not push it so yeah okay. thank you so much so yeah it won't push duplicates docker won't push duplicates so that is why sl logic was not pushed uh, yeah thank you for asking all right uh, so yeah uh, what i what i am trying to show you here is that if you look into the resource manifest folder of the project you will find a number of yaml file okay you will find a number of yaml files and these yaml files contains the instructions to deploy your software application into a kubernetes cluster so so basically what a kubernetes cluster is a kubernetes cluster is nothing but a combination of a number of docker host where you can run your containers and if you have a software in our case we have a software three microservices sa front end sa logic and sa web app and we want to run these microservices inside kubernetes cluster what you will do is you will create some yaml files and these yaml files will read will contain all the instructions what is the name of the docker image it is basil vargis slash sa frontend latest and from that image one container need to be created with the name sa frontend and then uh, you need to deploy the sa web app the image name is basil vargis slash sa web app create one or two containers for sa web app similarly from this image create python and this is how they will communicate a passing environmental variable as a web app can be passed with some environmental variable so that environmental variable also you will write inside the yaml file so we will be talking about all that in detail uh, those who didn't learn kubernetes don't worry but uh, i will tell you the way how kubernetes is deployed kubernetes is deployed just by using the yaml file in the yaml file you will mention this is the docker image to be deployed and i want one container to be running in one of the docker host in the kubernetes cluster so just if you have this yaml file you know with a single command you can execute all this yaml file into a kubernetes cluster and containers automatically get created inside the kubernetes cluster and your website will start working right it's true so with kubernetes deployment is one single command if you have the yaml files written properly that is your job that is your job when you work on kubernetes we will be talking about that in detail those who didn't learn don't worry so uh, fortunately for this project all the yaml files are there here itself so if i want to deploy them the only thing what i need to do is i need to execute this command go to the manifest folder resource manifest folder which is already there in github so i just run the cd command to go to that folder and there is a command called kubectl apply minus f and then put a dot before that your jenkins server should connect to kubernetes cluster using kubeconfig uh, some authentication mechanism need to be done jenkins should have the ability to connect to the kubernetes cluster and 
that is uh, basically a certificate you must copy to the Jenkins user. Once that is done, you know, this single command will deploy all these applications into a Kubernetes cluster with Kubernetes, the deployment is as easy as that. All right, we will, we will discuss that uh, later, not during this training, but <clears throat> so Basil, uh, you mean to say if you are having the TAML file, we no need to do all these above steps, right? In the configure now. That's yeah. what you mean to say, or and that is not what I mean to say. Uh, what I mean to say is uh, once you prepare the Docker images, deploying to Kubernetes is all about. Uh, specifying the details in the yaml file and kubectl command will read the yaml file where you mentioned uh, those docker images that you uploaded here so that kubernetes know what is the image it need to pull to deploy uh, deploy the containers kubernetes will be deploying the containers so in the yaml file you will mention how many containers you want what are the images from which container need to be created? So I would mention from Basil Varghese Docker ID, take this SF rendered image. It will take that. So these are the steps uh, uh, till what we done so far is we created the Docker image and push the Docker image that is called building and Dockerizing process, right? That is something you must do. Once you got the final images ready in your Docker Hub, then you can ask Kubernetes to take these images and deploy the cluster. That is what YAML files will do. YAML files will instruct Kubernetes to take these Docker images and run containers in the Kubernetes cluster. Okay. Right. So uh, that's what uh, that's what it is. Uh, cool. All right. So our next topic. Uh, Basil, uh, for uh, us who have completed Kubernetes, please do that. You know, running kubectl and all. And how to yeah, do the same command? It's kubis. You will connect to the cluster and run the kubectl apply command. That's yeah, and the config file should be co copied into SSH key here in Jenkins. And then the dot could be folder, could yeah. be con should be copied, right? The same steps and not change. You you create a cluster and the cluster has a could be config. You would copy that file into the dot could be folder and you run the could be serial apply command. That's it. Okay. It's, it's uh, as straightforward as that. So Jenkins created automatically YAML files? No, YAML files are created by you and kept inside this folder. Jenkins won't create YAML file, YAML files were created from Blackster and uh, those who didn't learn Kubernetes, they will explain that in this case. But yeah. So in this case, you have created the YAML files? not me this is a project that i took for uh, as an example project to demonstrate so whoever developed this project yeah he has that's what we will do in our company also that is exactly what we will do you will create the yaml files with instructions to deploy kubernetes cluster and use the kubectl command to apply them All right, uh, so great. So that's what this is. And now the next topic that I want to discuss is Jenkins uh, master slave. Okay, before that, let me show you some GitHub triggering. All right, uh, yeah. So uh, you might have seen this over here. Uh, today, you know, I need uh, about 
we will continue the classes uh, for uh, for an extra one hour maximum uh, to finish our Jenkins topics. All right, it's Saturday, so uh, all right. So uh, once you open a Jenkins job, you see different different things, right? Uh, I want to show you the most important things. So uh, when you open a job discard all build github project so if if your project is a github project in our case yes it is you can mention the github url over here and uh, i will explain the purpose later this will you know it's it's all about telling jenkins that this is a github project right jenkins got to know that this is a github project and if it is github project there is something extra that jenkins can do so we will we will you know we'll come to that and then um okay so this option is to tell jenkins that our project is a github project and this is the url to github and then uh, the build require lockable resources sometimes uh when when you want to run a job you want to lock some resources right do not run the other job while this job is running you would want to put some restrictions jenkins allows you to do that and project parameterization very very important i will talk about it in a bit you can basically pass some uh, arguments parameters to the jenkins job while it is running so first time you run the job you would mention the image tag equal to latest next time you mention you can mention the image tag as 1.0.1 next time 1.0.2 so like that you can pass some data to a jenkins job at the time of running the job that is what mean by a parameterization i will show you some demonstration then throttling the build basically you know you don't want multiple jobs to be executed at the same time you want to throttle you know uh, within one hour two jobs can run so you can put some kind of throttling how many bills will run per hour so any any anything more it would wait for uh, you know two per hour then it means you know every 30 minutes a build can run a, any other build need to wait right so you can do such kind of throttling to make sure that the load is balanced inside the Jenkins server and this uh, option would disable the Jenkins project and this option will allow Jenkins to execute the concurrent builds uh, so more than one build can run at the same time if you check this box so these are different different options so let me talk about the parameterized building So let us talk about the Jenkins parameters. So uh, I will tell you one example, right? I mean, you can pass any parameters and use those parameters inside your Jenkins job. So in as per my use case, I want every time I execute this job, I want a different tag to be used for the Docker images. Let's say 1.0.1 dev, 1.0.1 beta, 1.0.1 stable, 1.0.2, something like that. I want, instead of calling the Docker images latest, I want to call them with some proper version name, right? So if you want to do that, you can actually pass some parameter to the Jenkins. So assume you decided that instead of using the latest tag name. I know there are many places where you mention latest. Probably, you know, in local Jenkins, it's okay. But when you are tagging and pushing to the Docker Hub, I want to tag it. I want to give a name, something like uh, 1.0.1 or 1.0.2, 1.0.3. .0 .0 Today, I want to create 1.0.1. .1. Tomorrow, I want to create 1.0.2. Right. So in such case, instead of putting latest here, hard coding the latest here, you can actually 
use some arguments, something like this, uh, image tag. Right, you, this is a variable that you are mentioning. So instead of mentioning latest here, you would mention this variable. And then you can pass this variable at the time of running the job. Every time the job gets executed, you would pass a different image tag and then it will result in building a new all new docker image think about that sounds good right so that's what i'm going to do this image tag is a parameter that i want to pass at the time of running the job so i go to the top of the job and over here i have this option to parameterize the project and there are different type of parameter drop down parameter where you can give options for the answers string parameter where you know you can input as a string so you can mention write down 1.0.1 at the time of building so there are different types of parameter and the most common one is the string parameter so i'm going to create a parameter with the name image tag image tag is the name of the parameter and whatever value that i pass for the image tag it would be put here right so if i put 1.0.0 then it will be replaced with 1.0.0 so i am just making this as a parameter image tag and the default value i want the default value to be latest and yes people can change it to 1.0.1 or 1.0.2 or whatever automatically it will reflect in the build process right so let's do this i'm going to save this and now i try to build it try to build it uh, and it is asking me to specify the image tag that you want to build looks good right so i mentioned let's say 3.9.10 this is the tag that i want to build and i want this docker image to be available on my docker hub account so I just mention it here and click on build button then automatically this value will be tagged by docker and pushed to the docker hub uh, once the job is completed so once the job is completed I can go to take a look at my hub.docker.com account I would see SF and 3.9.10 uh, for SF and SA logic and SA web app. So this is how I can easily version my artifact. So think about the situation, right? Think about the situation like uh, you are you are ready to release your code. You decided that the code is very stable. Everything looks good. All testing are passed, and you are doing a release. You are deploying the latest code to your customer environment or in the production environment so at that time it's better to version it right in google chrome you every daily you get updates from google chrome or maybe weekly you get updates from google chrome google chrome and every time you open the google chrome you know you see a different different version is installed for google chrome and every version will have a name version 90.0.3 or firefox in, in case of microsoft office also right office 2016 or 2018 you you have this kind of versioning option so if you want to version your software product this is the way to do it and yeah now we built it we built the final docker images and they will be called 3.9.10 something like that so you go here and uh, something new might have come here uh, called 3.9.10 yes it has for all the images you can see a new tag got created called 3.9.10 so this is just an example right let's say i want my jenkins job to build from master branch instead of the development branch yes you can parameterize that also right somewhere within your jenkins job right under source code management you mentioned that i want to check out from the development branch so let's say i want an option to choose the branch at the time of running the job you can make it a parameter 
So if you can mention brands or something like this. Branch SEM or you know some some variable name and I'm going to define this variable over here under parameter I'm going to add another string parameter and this is the name of the parameter the default value is development But let's say you can change it you want to change it to master you can change it to master then Jenkins will check out the code from the master branch So that is possible. So any kind of thing you want to parameterize you can parameterize right uh, this time I run this it will ask me to specify the tag. So I mentioned 3.9.10 uh, And here I can mention master so I want then I will change the tag also I want the code to be checked out from master and build it as a this image Or instead of specifying master you can actually specify the commit ID. That's also fine From which commit you want to take the code? You can take the git commit ID also. So Jenkins will take that particular code and it will create the Docker image with this name. So now you have the flexibility, right? It became very flexible for you. You can specify which code you want to take and which Docker image you want to build. You can mention both the details at the time of running the job itself. So right your developers are not very technical or your QA engineers are not very technical What would you do for them? You tell them that let's say if you want yesterday's code to be deployed I have created a job for you in Jenkins come here and specify Whichever code that you want to deploy and whatever name you want to give it to the docker image So they get the flag all they can do is they can come to the Jenkins they find the job that you created they just click on build with parameter and they get to choose which code they want to build so it can be a commit id or it can be the name of a branch or it can be a tag and then here you mention 3.9 dot whatever uh, the image that you want to create that's all then it will do the job developer does not want to know what is going on in the background they got the docker image that's what they needed Right, so the parameterization can be very very helpful in Jenkins You can do a lot of things if you parameterize it properly All right, uh, so take a short break take a five minutes break. We will continue after five minutes Okay So yeah this conference will now be recorded. Okay, good. Okay, so so we talked about parameters, right? And the next thing is that you know, let us talk about some triggering. So. So we have been running the job by clicking the build button, right? Okay, let me remove the parameters. No, oh, it's okay. Let 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 let's leave that be. Uh, right. What I'm trying to say is, we have been every time we wanted to build the job, we had manually click this button, log into Jenkins, click this button to build it, right? That is the way what we have been following and uh, you might have noticed that this is not the right approach right when you work inside a company you don't want someone to log into jenkins and run the job all the time you want the jobs get executed automatically for example when tom push the code into github jenkins will detect that and jenkins will trigger it automatically or when uh, you know when some event happens a pull request or some change happen in the github Jenkins want to start building the job or sometimes you manually want to start a job in Jenkins But not from the browser, but from a command line From a script you want to execute some script from outside that should trigger a job in Jenkins so like that you want to automate the triggering of the jobs or when 
the job start to run right you can trigger that automatically so that is exactly what i am going to talk about so click on configure on the left side and if you scroll down you will see the heading below the source code management you would find something called build triggers so these uh, these options would allow you to run the jenkins job automatically without having to log into jenkins and build it so there are various options available one is build periodically let's say you know that you are working on a busy project and your developers keep on making the code modification daily you know 10 or 15 times code get modified by developers and then what you want to do is you want to run the jenkins job let's say every one hour or every two hours you expect that there are a number of code chains every two hours and you want to build it automatically or assume a different scenario in a different scenario uh, your qa team have some script that they want to execute every day at noon at 12 o'clock they want to execute a number of programs automatically so what you can do is you can just specify a cron job and schedule it right uh, give me one second Yeah, uh, what I'm trying to say here is that, uh, you know, uh, you can specify a schedule in Windows, you have schedule job, right? Uh, similarly, in Jenkins, you can mention every two hours uh, this week, run this or maybe uh, for this entire year, every day, daily, run this uh, throughout the week, throughout the month, throughout the year, daily, every two hours, run the job. So you can specify some cron by mentioning for field. The first field indicate which hour you want to run it. Second field indicate which, uh, sorry, first field indicate at which minute you want to run it. Then second field indicate in which hour you want to run it. Third field indicate in which uh, day of the month you want to run it. All right? Yeah. Uh, so first and second I want to run it. I can put one comma two then you mentioned which month of the year you want to run it one for january 12 for december so i want to run it in january month i put one then at the end you mentioned which are the weekdays monday to uh sorry sat sunday to saturday zero to six zero means sunday six means saturday so let's say you want to run only on sundays you mentioned zero if you want to run every day you mention star if you want to run every month you mentioned star here also if you want to run every day in the month, you put star here also. You want to run every hour, you want to put star here also. You want to run every minute, you put star. So star means all. So first field indicate, uh, there are total five fields. First field indicate the minute. Second field indicate the hour. Third field indicate the day of the month. Fourth field indicate the month of the year. And fifth field indicate the weekday, I mean, day of the week, right? Sunday to Saturday. So you can specify if you want to run on both Sunday and Monday, you can mention 0, 1. 0 for Sunday, 1 for Monday, 6 for Saturday, like that. And for month, 1 for January, 2 for February, 12 for December. In case of day, yeah, uh, it's normal. Everything else is normal. So I want to run it not every minute, but only on the zeroth minute. I mean, when the hour starts at that time, I want to run it. So you can put zero or you can put 
10. If you put 10, what does that mean? 12, 10, 1, 10, uh, 2, 10, 3, 10, right? In the 10th minute of every hour, you put star here. In the second field, you put star, that means every hour, 10th minute. Or if you want, uh, you know, uh, on run only at the midnight, you put zero here. Zero means midnight. Uh, 10 means 10 a.m. Uh, then, uh, you know, uh, 24 means or 23 means 11 p.m. 24 away is definition, right? So uh, that that's why. So if I put zero means it will it at midnight at 10 a.m. That means 12 10, 12 10 midnight it will run. So this way you can adjust when you want to run it. So in my case, you know, I want to run it every two hours. You can do this. Star means every hour. If you want to run every two hours, you put star by two. Then it will run every two hours, maybe on the zero minute. Or if you put, you know, H here, it means any minute within that hour. That's also fine. If you put zero, it will start exactly at zero minute. Or if you put 10, it would start exactly at 3, 10, 4, 10, etc. But if you put sketch, uh, then you know you are not strictly specifying the time. It can run whenever it wants to. So uh, this way you can schedule it. So this schedule indicate that the job will run every two hours. Job will run. That's what this will make sure. It ran at two o'clock. It will run at four o'clock. Not exactly at four o'clock. I didn't put the exact minute. Uh, so anything between four to five, it will run. If I put zero, then exactly at four o'clock, it will run. If I put X, then I am giving the choice to Jenkins. Uh, you know, Jenkins can decide. So uh, this, uh, once you apply that, then, you know, without even triggering, it will run every, every two hours. So this is very useful when, when you want to run some testing on your application, some automation testing. You have some script that you got from your testing team and the testing team put the script inside the GitHub and your Jenkins will check out the script from the GitHub and it will execute those scripts and then the testing will run. And you want to do this testing daily at this time I, or every two hours you want to run it. You know, this is very useful. And there is a similar option called poll SCM. That is also you can specify the schedule. Basic small concern. Can I ask now? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, process wise, they mentioned periodically, like uh, every day or every hour, uh, whatever they want, they can they can uh, uh, do that one. But how how do we know that uh, developer deploy the correct code uh, basically because okay. they'll deploy something and uh, sometimes issue would be there they will uh, revert back the code and they will do again a new deployment in case of any issues or something right and that's what i'm so going if, to discuss next so yeah i'm going to discuss that sure all right so uh uh, we, uh, we were taking the scenario that you want to run some automation testing, right? For that, this is the best option. And now you think about the situation. Your developers are making some code change in GitHub. And only if there is a new code that developer created, you want Jenkins to run it. Or in other words, you want Jenkins to check GitHub every two hours. Check if there is a new commit. And Jenkins found a new commit from any one of the developer. Jenkins want to build the project. So for the CA job, for example, our job, that is a preferable option. Tom did not make any commit. Tom did not make any push or Jerry or no developer made any kind of push. In that case, you don't want to run the duplicate bills, right? You don't want to create the duplicate bills. So Jenkins will check every two hours or whatever schedule you mentioned. If you want to make it every one minute, do that. So Jenkins will keep checking uh, GitHub every minute and whenever it finds a new push has come there, it will start building. That is also possible. So this option will, will basically check the SAM for a new push from the developer and 
if it found there is a new change it will it will build the job right a better option right and this is what we very commonly use you know generally in my project what i had done is i did something like this every five minutes star by star by five means every five minutes in the first field that indicate minute star by five means every five minutes every five minutes my jenkins server will check the github and if there is a change it will start building this is also a good choice and sometimes there may be situation you don't you don't want to jenkins to check the github but instead jenkins would send a notification to i mean github would send a notification to jenkins every time there is a code change so what that means is okay let me disable this option and and what so instead instead of doing jenkins checking the github every five minutes what i want to do is every time a developer make a push operation to github github will send a notification to jenkins and jenkins will start building the project think about that yes that is possible so what you have to do is you will check this box in jenkins and then you will click on the save button so that box which you checked insist jenkins to listen to the request coming from github and if any trigger came from github jenkins will start building the job so what you have to do is you will go to github your project page and there is a settings option in the project page in your github project there on the left side you will find webhooks click on webhooks click on add webhooks and if it asks you to enter your password enter your password and then over here you specify the url of jenkins the url is something like this um okay search in google i have it out yeah yeah jenkins url slash uh, github webhook uh, this is the url the jenkins url slash so this is your jenkins url slash github webhook so this is the url github would send the notification to every time github uh, found that there is a commit coming from tom or, or a commit coming from jerry right every time tom or jerry do a push operation then uh, github will notify this url or in other words github will notify jenkins then what jenkins will do is jenkins will start building the project so let me save this just the push event so only at the time of push any developer do a push operation i want to do it or you can select what operation you want to do it from here it's a big list in my case you know every time developer make a push operation i want to do it perfect so from now tom or jerry or any developer of this project the retail project make a push operation to github automatically it would start building the job jenkins job all right so this is your jenkins job and let me make some change here i i go to tom's laptop Okay, this is not Tom's laptop, this is Jenkins server. Let me log into Tom's laptop. Tom is a developer and he is going to make a new commit and he is going to push the code into, into the GitHub. So Tom is working on, I think he's working on development branch. 
maybe let me disable these parameters i think okay let me check if it will work with parameter what is the current status um okay assume tom is going to simply making some code modification he is going to modify any code and simply putting some space here right and now tom is going to add the file Tom is going to commit it. And Tom is going to push it. All right, so whenever a, not Docker, git push. So whenever Tom do the push operation to GitHub, what will happen? GitHub will send a notification to Jenkins, right? Because we configured the webhook over here and 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 then jenkins would start building the job automatically so we wait okay i think you have to disable this uh, okay it didn't start yet let me disable these parameters i think that's why it's happening image tag and uh, git branch here it's development and image tag i'm going to change it to latest All right, uh, so let's try now. Uh, Tom is going to make some code change and make a push. Tom is going to make a push operation and as soon as Tom push the changes, GitHub will notice that and GitHub will uh, trigger Jenkins. I think there is some problem. Let me check why it is not triggering. There is some kind of error. Uh, yeah, GitHub is trying to send notification to Jenkins, but seems like GitHub is getting an error from Jenkins. So let me check what is the problem. I think it is only the default branch. Uh, let me push to master. I think the problem is that I am pushing to development. One second. Oops, oh, sorry. Let me push to master. Tom is going to switch himself to master. In master also he is making some modification and he is going to push to master and 
now take a look what happened to the trigger i think there is still error uh, let me make some small changes here change it to json Perfect. and here let me change it to development i mean change it to master now let's try to push something from tom's laptop and Okay, now take a look. No, I mean, if it is executing, you can find the status here on the left side down, but uh, seems to be, looks like there's some problem. I'm not getting a proper error. That is the problem. Maybe 88 is not required. It is. It is required. 88 is our Jenkins URL. So. All right. I will. I will look into that later. Uh, once again, let me okay, fine. So I will I'll look into that later. Okay, and don't don't worry about it. So uh, that is how it works, right? Uh, it should automatically start the Jenkins job, Jenkins build. Any developer make a push operation, it would start the build. Okay, great. So now think about this situation, right? Um, So you are Jenkins is doing a lot of work, right? Your Jenkins server does a lot of job. It executes a lot of job. So if you look into a company, look into their Jenkins server, you would actually find, you know, hundreds of jobs. And this can be one tricky question in the interview also. How many jobs do you have in your Jenkins server? So actually, there can be hundreds of, think about, you know, there are some 10 or 15 or 50 projects within the company and every project have something like four or five branches. And for every branches, your company follow a different continuous integration process, right? In development, you want to do unit testing. In development, you want to do some integration testing. But in staging, it would be, you know, some regression testing and also some uh, product related data related testing in production you want to do some you know simple uh, scope testing uh, something like that mock testing or whatever so every company will have different strategy for development this is the strategy staging this is the strategy production this is a strategy so they will create separate separate jobs for one project they will create uh, the separate ca job for development separate ca job for staging separate ca job for production they create different different jobs and assume there are 50 projects in your company you know for ca itself there are 200 jobs and then to provision the service you created you know 10 or 15 jobs to connect to the cloud and you know uh, do some kind of uh, routine backup you are using some other job 
then some uh, you know some disaster recovery jobs deployment jobs different different jobs will be there in jenkins right jenkins is not used for continuous integration alone it can be used for automating any kind of job job that your engineers are doing your qa engineers want to run some testing they can rather uh, put those tests inside the jenkins and run it periodically using jenkins so you keep creating jobs in jenkins whenever you find there is a manual work that your team is doing you pick up that and you will create a job in jenkins so uh, ideally you know you don't allow right a true devops engineer you won't allow any developer or anyone in your uh, in your team to do repeated jobs themselves right you use jenkins to automate it so a company will keep adding lots of jobs and the number of jobs will be huge and most of this job especially the ci jobs are very resource full jobs right i mean it need lot of cpu and memory the npm command for example it it download you know javascript libraries to download these javascript libraries it, there are a lot of them npm takes some effort to do that and it would increase the cpu and memory of the jenkins server whenever you run the npm install command or npm run build command or maven install command in our case the projects were too simple if they were complex project and if there were lots of dependencies then lots of execution need to be done on the jenkins server and for live project you know these are very heavy operations and companies would be using some 8 cpu or 16 cpu or 32 on the jenkins but again that would not be sufficient sometime right when lots of jobs run at the same time you cannot put all the jobs running on the same machine so you want to split the load right you want to at the end you want to run the jobs uh, rather than running all the jobs in one machine once you have grown once your company has grown and started creating lots of jobs you want to distribute the load master will run some job slave service will run some job so different machines a number of machine will work together for running the job so that can be done so i will quickly show you what is our plan so you have your jenkins server assume this is your jenkins server and this is the only jenkins server you have right you can connect to it using ip address 8080 you can keep creating the job you know there are assume there are some 500 or 1000 jobs that you created and at the time of creating the job you can actually mention all the java build related job you want to run them on a different machine called slave 001 you created another machine called slave 001 and all the java related jobs you want to run them all the javascript related jobs i mean i'm just saying right you want to run them on a different machine called slave 002 so like that you can actually create a number of machines we call them jenkins slaves let's say slave 001 slave 002 slave 003 etc you create keep on creating a number of machines and at the time of creating the jobs in your jenkins master you would specify in which server the job should run or sometimes you can group slave 01 and 02 together and you can call it something like let's say my java service it's possible then you know then you can mention this particular job that i am creating it should run on the machines that has the label java server so if there are two machines that is added to the java label you know the job can run either here or it can run here so sometimes you can group a number of machine together and then you can specify in which group you want to run the job then it will one of the machine will run the job what one of the machine within the group will run the job so that is also possible 
you can you know you can do these kind of things inside jenkins you can you keep creating the jobs and for where the job will run whether you would mention the name of the machine directly or you would mention the name of the label or name of the group that one of the machine will run it so jenkins allows you to set up such kind of master slave configurations and that is what i am going to show you so go to your jenkins server now i want my jenkins server to get some support right from my slave machine i need to add a new slave machine to the jenkins so first of all let me create a machine in my aws account which i want to use as the slave so i'm going to launch a new machine but basil isn't it a good approach to run a particular project in one machine instead of distributing it over all the different machines yeah it sounds great and the problem here is that uh, you know uh, your limitations one machine cannot run everything for a given project yes it's it's fine uh, so uh, yeah for one project it can probably run in one machine always that is one way uh, so yeah which slave you want to select it depends on your strategy you know it is it it will vary from company to company person to person you can decide the strategy that you want to follow which job need to run on which slave it's absolutely up to the company to decide so at the end lot should be balanced okay right yeah uh, but basil hello mm -hmm. where we are trying to distribute this uh, work through different different slave correct so let's suppose right. one slave has some problem so there shouldn't be any uh, dependency kind of thing or that particular uh, task will only suffer and rest of all will work uh, like I said, uh, you don't have to specify the individual uh, machine. You can specify a label. So that means one of these machines, you can mention that also. Right? So that means can... that uh, once you will uh, select that label, as you are saying, so this and and that uh, like uh, uh, let's suppose uh, you select fifth one that should uh, work you know that should run and if i'm facing issue with the fourth one so there shouldn't be an inter uh, interconnectivity or a dependency that's what we are trying to there are no dependencies there are no dependencies okay. if the uh, job is running on slave four and slave four fails then the job will fail otherwise uh, there is no problem you slave 4 is down it won't affect slave 5 or any jobs that are running on slave 5 they will continue to run all slaves are independent they can work independently okay. it's all about uh, you assign, assign the work to uh, right you are assigning work to the people you work on okay. this and you work on that that's what you do okay yeah, missiles. Yeah, you means if one slave is down or maybe crash, we cannot take any backup things. Or you are telling right, uh, there is no such kind of. If it will fail, means it will be fail, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, the backup would be you insist Jenkins to uh, schedule job on a group of machine rather than specifically selecting a machine. It's not only for jenkins everywhere it's a bad idea you you select a machine by choosing the machine name right it's always a bad idea so uh, to solve that problem uh, that is why the groups are present or labels are present rather than selecting an individual machine you select a group of machine whichever machine is up and running that will run the 
that is a okay, well. we always follow i mean not only for jankim it's like a for everywhere this is a practice okay thank you all right so let us continue so uh, i'm going to create i created a new aws machine and i want a jenkins master to ssh to the slave machine that i just created and then configure that machine so first of all i should enable the key authentication master machine this is the jenkins master the machine we are currently working on and now i created a new machine in my aws account and my plan is to make this machine a jenkins slave and jenkins master machine and that means this machine my existing machine want to ssh to the jenkins slave that i just created and then work on this particular slave that is our plan so uh, first of all i will log into the jenkins slave and i must install java java must be installed uh, for jenkins to work properly so there are few things on the jenkins slave machine so i log into the new aws machine that i just created i will oh permission denied did i select the wrong key or something i think i have ubuntu spelling is incorrect okay got it yeah sorry so i logged into the jenkins slave machine and inside the jenkins slave i am going to first i will create a jenkins user right user add minus s pen bash minus m and i want the home folder of the jenkins slave to be same as the jenkins master what is the home folder of jenkins master it is okay let me log into the master login as jenkins user and this is the home folder of jenkins master you know i am using the same folder for the user that i am creating in slave so basically i just i'm just creating a linux user on slave that's all right i am creating a user with the name jenkins inside the slave machine my plan is that uh, the jenkins master will log into jenkins slave as jenkins user so first of all let me switch myself to jenkins user going to uh, create a folder called dot ssh and inside the dot ssh folder inside the authorized keys file i'm creating a file called authorized keys and inside that file i will paste the master service public key so i go to the master machine in the master machine remember you already created a key pair for github when we set up github uh, on jenkins server you already created a key pair right private and public key this is the private key it's the public key on the jenkins master jenkins master public key just like how you copied this key to the github i'm going to copy this key to the slave machine the reason why i did this is i want jenkins master to ssh to the jenkins slave so do i need to repeat the steps for ssh you already know those steps right machine one want to log into machine two so in our case the master machine want to ssh to the new slave machine that you just created in your aws account so the first thing what i did is i created a user in this machine username is jenkins and inside under that user dot ssh folder i created a dot ssh folder because it was not there already so i created it dot ssh folder and in that a file called authorized keys this is where public key has to be stored jenkins master i already created a private public key pair in the previous class and this public key now i copied into this particular location 
on the slave then my master server can ssh to the slave machine remember those ssh concept that we discussed so that is exactly what i was doing i was uh, making my master server log into the slave now my master server can ssh to the slave as user jenkins in the slave machine i i created a new user with the name jenkins as that user i can ssh from master so why would my master machine want to ssh to the slave to set up the slave machine right now the slave machine is just a plain linux machine i haven't installed any jenkins slave software in it and i will never do it it would be the jenkins master who will be configuring all the jenkins slave itself i will not configure any jenkins slave myself it is the job of the master to ssh to each jenkins slave and install some slave software in it it's not my responsibility my responsibility is that i can configure master to ssh to these slave machines then are these slave machines in the jenkins gui and i'm going to do that okay uh this is one question uh, what is the importance of setting the varlib uh, jenkins as the home folder for the slave or uh, can we set like user slash jenkins yeah it's fine actually yeah a home folder can be anything it's not important actually uh, i just want the slave to have the same folder as master that would standardize you know that would avoid confusions if if you want to troubleshoot something right uh, in master uh, workspace is located in one folder and in slave workspace is located in another folder so to avoid that confusion i want uh, both every slave whichever slave i create i would set the home folder as a uh, varlib jenkins okay it's but fine. it's not a, like a roadblock or right? that uh, it has to be that folder. nothing uh, yeah uh, it, it can be any folder it, it's not a problem okay thanks it is only for avoiding the confusion across developers you know every time they log into the machine to troubleshoot something you know they see different folders so to avoid that confusion this is helpful use the same home folder for every machines all right so now my jenkins master can ssh to the jenkins slave and i think we have a power problem here okay give me one second all right so let us create the slave okay right? that's what i'm going to do i'm going to add the slave from you can do it from the uh, gui from the jenkins dashboard you can do it go to the jenkins dashboard click on uh, manage resources manage jenkins click on manage nodes manage nodes and clouds so over here and go to manage nodes now you click on this button new node and then you specify some name of the slave that you are creating i'm going to name it slave 001 then give some description and uh, how many execution can take place at the same time you can mention here remote root directory what is the folder uh, of the slave machine the same folder whatever we had given uh, it is warlib jenkins
and then you specify some label you know label can be a group name let's say web server building or probably java building to build the java project i want to use this right something like that you can do this way or probably for python project i am planning to use it then you know every time you create a slave you can add the slave to a label so the slave 001 is now added to the label python then, then i create slave 002 later i can add that also to the label python so when you create a job in jenkins later you can mention uh, directly the slave name or you can mention the label name label name is something like a group so it will select any one of the machine that has that label so this is how you can add a machine to a label and usage use it as much as possible yeah whatever and launch agent by connecting to the master or launch agent via ssh i am asking my jenkins master to ssh to the slave machine i already provided the ssh access to master so it should be good then i have to specify the ip address of the slave i'm going to take the ip address of the slave private ip would be fine because both are aws machines that's why and jenkins server can ssh to this slave machine using jenkins private key no need to create a new credentials remember we in the last class we already stored the private key of jenkins master as a credentials i'm simply selecting the same credentials from the drop down no need to add the private key of master again not needed it's added once as a credential every time you can choose the credential from a drop down only if you need you add a new credentials in this case it's not needed and i don't want this warning to come right every time you try to ssh it would throw you a warning are you sure you want to continue connecting right that warning i don't want to see so you have to make sure that you choose this option non verifying strategy and that's all now you know you can click on the save button before i do that remember i told you java must be installed right on the slave machine java must be installed so let me do that inside the slave so disconnected so this is my slave machine and i'm going to install java in it you can use apt get i think the package name is yesterday what was the package name open jdk 11 jdk is this correct i think this is the package name for java java must be installed on the slave machine so that's what i'm doing yes the package name is correct uh, if java is not installed you know uh, you will get an error uh, if you try to create a slave machine uh, you will get an error uh, java must be installed uh, before you add a slave all right um, just make sure that java is installed before you provision the slave it's not you who will be provisioning the slave it is the jenkins master that is provisioning the slave so let us go ahead and do it 
So as soon as I click on the save button, Jenkins master will SSH to the slave and provision the slave. So basically it will install some slave package in that machine and slave machine will become ready. So you don't have to worry about setting up the slave. Just add the slave from the UI. It will take some time, you know, the master will SSH to slave, install some slave software in it and, you know, set it up from scratch. Slave will also have a UI like uh, master or no? No. Slave is only for running the job. The only purpose of slave would be running the job. Dashboard would be only in the master. We will be uh, create from the dashboard. We will be creating job in the master and we specify where the job will run. So that is the only purpose of slave. The actual running job creation always happens in the master itself. So now you, oh sorry, go back to, yeah, it's ready now. You can see the error is gone. Slave is ready. Uh, once the slave become ready, that red mark will disappear. So now I'm going to create a job. And I already installed Java in the slave. Let me also install Maven in the slave as well. Basically on the slave, I want to build the Java project. I just want to demonstrate that's it. So I am installing Maven on the slave machine. The reason why I am doing this is now I want to create a job in Jenkins. What the job will do is it will build the SA web app in the slave. The build process will happen on the slave machine. So that is exactly what I am going to do. I'm going to create a new job. The new job will build only the SA web app, nothing else. Only for, you know, my retail project. Retail project has SA web app. So this job that I'm creating is for building only the SA web app, that's all. So click on, uh, you know, uh, say OK button and let me specify all the all the necessary settings under source code management. I mentioned the URL of my GitHub. Even though I want to check out the entire code, I don't want to build the entire code. I want to build only the SA web app. So I am telling Jenkins what is the code to check out. And later I will go to the SA web app folder and build only that project. So over here I mentioned uh, the location of ACM. And over here, I mentioned the steps to build the SA web app. What are the steps you already know? Uh, the command is a CD SA web app. Only SA web app I am building. Uh, the command is Maven install. And you know, uh, and I created this job. And I am doing one more thing. At the time of creating the job, there is some option. <clears throat> option called restrict where this project can run either you can mention the project should run in the master machine or you can mention the project should run in the slave 001 machine or you can mention it should run in the python label so you can here you can select where the job will run so wherever you selected, there the job will run. So I use select slave 001. I am selecting the machine by its name, or I can do it using the label. So then any machine, any slave with the label will run the job. So that is also fine. So remember slave 001 machine, I already added to the label Python, so it will work. Now I am going to execute this job. Let's try to execute it. You will see that the job will run in the Python label. And there is only one machine that has Python label that is slave 001. So when I execute the job, the job will run on slave 001. Try that. Click on build now button. Let's take a look at the console output. 
you can see it started on slave 001 the python label so mvn install command it checked out the code from git and now it is running the maven install command and all these things are happening on the slave machine not on the master so you run the same job 100 times all 100 build will happen in the slave only you know it, nothing will disturb the master so this way you can you know every job you can schedule into different different machines make sure that you know in slave you want to run maven install maven must be installed on slave that is your responsibility to make sure uh, the environment should be set up so that is why i installed maven on the slave machine so it it works so you can this way you can distribute every time you create a job you specify where the job will run so this way you can balance the load across multiple machines rather than running everything in one machine so master slave configuration is very helpful for the companies so uh, this is how you will do it in jenkins all right so any questions we have one topic pending that i will discuss at a later point of time you know during the project next week sometimes during our project i will discuss this the pipeline this is what i want to discuss so we will discuss that you uh, know uh, tomorrow or day after uh, i mean monday or tuesday after your project discussion i will take some 15 minutes 15 minutes is good enough 15 to 20 minutes uh, one topic pending we will cover that so uh day after tomorrow we will start our project all right we are going to start our project a day after uh, tomorrow uh, so i will explain the project in in about 15 minutes and i will decide who will be leading the project today one of you need to lead this project Thanks. Anybody who want to take up this project, you can let me know. Otherwise, uh, you can send a message in the chat. If anybody who is ready to take up the project, uh, send me a message in the chat. And this is a very good project. all right so let's talk about next week project it's a little i wouldn't say technically not challenging but again conceptually the cicd training is all about concepts right and i hope i explained them all in the right manner but definitely there can be confusions and no, watch the video if needed and make sure that you are very clear with all the concepts we have discussed i would say when you when you are at work right when you work as a devops engineer ci is the process that you should understand the best that is your top priority tomorrow you are joining a company the first thing what you will learn or you will try to learn is how they have implemented the ci cd practices what tool they are using for storing the code and what how that uh, tool work right if it is not get if it is subversion how exactly the architecture of that particular tool is and who is taking the code from there and building compiling and building the code so is it a person generally it is not a person nowadays nobody does that manually most of the company are automating it so how it is done automatically who will which system is picking up the code and running the build 
some companies has you know a previous day was working in a company they have set up their own build build tool or uh, it could be maven it could be npm or it depends on the project it could be different different tools so you will find out which tool uh, developers are using or in the current project try to learn that tool so the build process you have a clear idea now you will look into the pom.xml file or package.json file to understand what are the dependencies and what is the format in which that file is written then you want to know are you using docker or how we are running if you if you are not using docker then probably what people are doing is think about the situation if we were not using docker how you will run our project we have this project right as a front end project as a web app project and as a logic project assume we were not using docker then how would you do it how would you manage it how you will run as a front end Uh, you need to create a server for that right you will create a machine in a machine in aws and you will install apache or nginx in it you will copy that build folder into the document root and then you open the uh, firewall port port 18 aws and you will browse it and you will see the website is working now how about sa web app it's a jar file that we created for sa web app so if we didn't have uh, docker how you will run the java application maybe install i mean you have the jar file and you want to run the software deploy the software A maven install is for creating the executable file i'm saying you have the final executable file you know that this you execute this exe file your software will start running so you want to run that software on a machine and you don't have docker install java and then run it yeah so again you need a machine you need an aws machine or a cloud server you have to install java inside the machine and then you will execute this jar file and the java application will start running on that machine and how about python if you didn't have docker you will do the same thing and install python on the machine all the dependencies need to be installed and the program should be executed the python program should be executed so and obviously i mean you don't want to do these repeated jobs right you have to install python on 100 machines or you want to install this jar file on uh, 50 machines because you know uh, your java as a web app is getting high load from the people one machine is not sufficient what you would do then and you don't have docker you want to automate the machine creation right you really don't want to do 100 machine creation manually from the aws console and then do it one by one right so if you are not using docker you know things are more complex you may have to use ansible or some system for launching the machine and you will run the ansible playbook you will create ansible playbook to install java to copy the jar file to execute the jar file you have to use some other tools which is not a docker such as ansible ansible or some other tool you will have to use and in case of this also let's say you want to run the uh, apache server 10 apache server you need 10 machines and all 10 machines uh, this build folder should be present in the wwww html folder apache must be installed apache must be running so you should do that using ansible or some other tools because you have no choice you have don't have docker at the same time you don't want to do the work manually you don't have docker there are many companies who don't use docker it does not mean that they do all the job manually of course the job becomes complex but they don't do it manually if they have to do it manually you know it's a it's a big headache 
so you will understand whether your company uses docker or not you need to understand how these artifacts are running on the surveys that is the next thing you will try to learn when you join a company how this software is running on the surveys are they directly executing the jar file in the machines or are they creating the docker image and running docker containers if they are running docker containers where they are creating the docker containers are they using kubernetes or are they using some other orchestrator you know there should be some method to run the docker containers from the docker image so are they using kubernetes then learn kubernetes try to understand how that works and what they are using to automate this whole process are they using jenkins are they using circle ci there are different different ci tools available so which tools do they use for automating everything at un, under single umbrella so we, we, are, we are using jenkins for that all the steps we put under one job and we execute them continuously so you learn the ci process of your project uh, most of you are working in some companies maybe you are not on devops role i know that uh, the point here is that you can keep exploring this in your current project this has to be a practical training and uh, you should have a clear overview uh, so just you know try to explore uh, those who are currently working try to explore your project how what are the different tools your company is using to achieve the cicd practice understand each and every step try to understand everything in detail and you know believe me that would add a lot of value to your to your professional career it, it's believe me so try that you know uh, and uh, rewatch the videos whatever that need to be rewatched uh, please watch them again that is very very important concept should be very clear whatever concept we talked about in the last two weeks they are extremely important all right so uh, you learn cicd you know you learned uh, 70 percent of the ops and then what remains is the tools learning that you can always search in google and learn so that is something you can you know you don't even need training for learning the tools right the training are more meant for understanding how you work that is more important so just you know whatever you can do to achieve or accomplish this do it uh, if you have a project where you can learn you know try to get involved in the project if not getting involved just try to see the project and what tools at least what they are using you know do whatever make sure that you you know the all these concepts and how it is implemented in your project try to learn that all right so our project when you do the project next week you know keep all these things in mind what should be the final deliverable what you want to achieve at the end right that is what you you have to keep in mind so we have a project next week and the project we will use the same code the same project what we have been talking about <clears throat> you know the architecture already so i'm not explaining again so i want you to do few things and these are things that we never learned yet uh, but that's okay because that is what you will do when you join a company you are going to do things that you didn't learn right uh, just yeah okay uh, so uh, let's explain you know let me explain this uh, what you need to achieve at the end at the end of the project you will create a registry to store the so uh, you we have been pushing our docker images into hub.docker.com so instead of hub.docker.com you will create your own registry called harbor harbor is a software you can install harbor software inside a linux machine and then uh, you know you can start pushing your docker images in there from a developer laptop or from a jenkins server you know you can push docker images to this registry 
just like how you push to hub.docker.com. So one team will work on setting up Harper. So the Harper is a software you can install on a Linux machine. You'll create an AWS machine, install Harper in it, and then you have this option to create usage. You can create usage. You can create a user called Jenkins. You can create a user called uh, Usama, create a user called Asha. So like that, you know, you can create logins for everyone. And then you can create projects. In here, you can create projects. You can create a project called, you know, uh, our CI CD project or maybe retail project. Some name you can give. You can create a project once you, uh, everything can be done from the GUI. Uh, once you install Harbor, you can browse for Harbor URL on the browser and you can log into Harbor with username and password. Then you can create usage such as Jenkins user, uh, Usama, Asha, and then you can create a project, then add the usage into the project. And it, it is into the project, you will be uploading the Docker images, Tom or Jerry, or you know, you after you build this SA front and SA logic and SA web app images, after you build them, you will upload them into this Harbor project. And whenever you create a Harbor project, you would get a URL, something like this, or uh, you know something like uh, the ip address of your machine slash name of the project so instead of basil vargis in case of hub.docker.com i was using my docker id basil vargis so in place of basil vargis you would get how to use the ip address of the harper machine slash uh, slash the name of the project that you created maybe the retail project then slash SA front end latest slash SA logic latest slash uh, like that. This is how the image will be referred. The IP address slash project name slash image name. That is how you will be referring them. Okay, great. So uh, one team has to take up this responsibility of creating the harbor server. And you will create login credentials for everyone, for every every people who is working on the project. You will create a username and password for everyone from the harbor, and you would share their access. And the uh, all this developer can, uh, you know, push or pull from the registry. Great. So that is one team's responsibility. And one thing that you should make sure, whoever is working on setting up the registry, create two projects, CICD, CICD uh, production, then uh, don't give the name CICD, it's a bad name, maybe retail production. Retail production is one project, retail develop is one project. So uh, I will explain why you are using two projects, right? So some Docker image will get stored in retail production. Some Docker image gets stored in retail development. So in Harbor, I told you, you can create projects, right? You can create a multiple project, add the people to the respective project. So you will create a Jenkins user. You will create a user with name Asha. You will create another user with name Osama like that. You create for every people, you create a login. You create a login for Jenkins also. And to the development project, Jenkins have read write access. Everyone, Asha, Osama, and all of you will have read write access. That means you can push Docker images here and you can pull Docker images from here. You get both permission on the development project but in production project no developer will have any access only jenkins server can push and pull from production repo so that harbor team who is working on the harbor project they will install harbor they will set up harbor they will create username and password for everyone and they create two projects one is production one is development and for development project, you give access to everyone, push and pull. 
to the production you give access only to jenkins only jenkins get access to production so this is the responsibility of the harbor team and um, yeah then the next thing somebody who already learned kubernetes right you will form a team to create one or two cluster or you know create only one cluster in google cloud or in aws or in azure anywhere you can create a kubernetes cluster and after you created the cluster you will from the jenkins uh, you uh, you know uh, i think yeah, it is pretty simple you already have the yaml files with you right so it's pretty simple no need to create the yaml file uh, the team who work on the kubernetes cluster they will simply create a kubernetes cluster and they will share the kubi config with the jenkins team jenkins team will use kubi config file to connect to kubernetes cluster and deploy these yaml files and yeah there is one work that jenkins team has to do sorry kubernetes team has to do you will create separate set of yaml file for development and production kubernetes team please pay attention i mean whoever so whoever learned kubernetes i am talking to you you will be duplicating all this yaml file and change the namespace to production so right now it is default name namespace and there is no namespace here and all this yaml file you will use for your deploying the development application and you want to also deploy a production application so same deployment you will do two times in two namespaces these all this yaml file you will create a duplicate and you will modify the metadata to specify the namespace so what that means is you create two environment development environment and production environment in different namespaces so you will run the project and development environments are used inside the company for the testing purpose production environment is used in the companies for delivery purpose i mean it is the actual customer service so uh, a kubernetes team has to create duplicate all these yaml files and you know uh, better you create two folders in the resource manifest you create one folder called development one folder called production in the development you copy all this yaml file as it is in the production you copy all this yaml file by after then change the namespace so because i want production to run in a different namespace in kubernetes cluster and a development environment run in another namespace so both production and development environment must be isolated to each other that is why i want to run them in different namespaces so kubernetes team do this so when you want to deploy production you will run the kubectl apply command from the production folder when you want to deploy development you will go to the development folder and run the kubectl apply command right so create separate separate environment and that is also i believe it's a, a simple and straightforward job so the main thing is that you create the cluster you prepare the yaml file separate yaml for production separate yaml for development and then uh, the cluster credential should be given to the jenkins team because jenkins want to connect to the cluster to do the deployment okay great then the most important work to be done by the jenkins team your job is to perform the continuous integration okay so jenkins want to connect to harbor what all things your jenkins will do jenkins job will do so the jenkins team this is your responsibility you pull from github uh, check out the code from github build the code build the code 
and create the jar file or executable files dockerize them uh, they, we have already seen all these things now push to registry which registry which registry you will push the image to you will harbor. push the image to harbor right not hub.docker.com so push to harbor initially you will be pushing to harbor development later you will push to harbor uh, that i will explain you later so you will push to harbor after pushing to harbor what is the next thing deploy kubernetes development so this particular job will work on completely on the development branch it will check out the code from github development it will build the development code dockerize them and push the development docker images to the development registry of harbor development project of harbor registry then it will deploy the kubernetes development environment so the kubernetes team will create this yaml files uh, or the jenkins team all you have to do is go to the production folder and run the kubis uh, sorry development folder in resource manifest and run the kubectl apply command then you are deploying the development environment so this is one job in jenkins to build and deploy development then you create one more job in jenkins this is the development job in jenkins now you will create a production job in jenkins this is another job in jenkins that you create okay you build the production code dockerize the production code push to the docker production registry harbor in harbor you will create development registry and production registry this jenkins job will push to production registry and it will then deploy kubernetes production so the kubernetes team would have already created a folder called production in the resource manifest so you will deploy there you will run the kubectl apply command from the production folder i mean it is as simple as that right uh, it's technically it is not challenging job same thing the only challenging part is that jenkins should authenticate with harbor to push to harbor so harbor team would give you the username and password jenkins team would get the username and password of the harbor registry using that username and password jenkins will log into harbor registry and do the pushing similarly jenkins want to connect to the kubernetes cluster jenkins want to first of all log into the kubernetes cluster using some kubi config the kubernetes team will tell you what to do uh, so they will give you a certificate you will uh, put that certificate in a specific location on the jenkins server the kubernetes team can help you with that location it is in dot kubi folder somewhere you have to put it so uh, whatever so you create two separate jobs in jenkins one is the development job and other one is the production job development job will build and deploy development environment production job will build and deploy the production environment so after deploying the development environment you will do some testing is it all looking good is there any problem right everything you will do at testing in the development you try to browse it on your browser you know make sure that all looking good if it is looking good then you run this job this job you don't trigger automatically this job can be triggered as soon as you push you know you can connect this particular job with your github every time a developer push to the github automatically this job will run or you can mention a cron job saying that every every five minutes jenkins this job will keep checking github if there is any new change any developer made it would start building so this job is automatic nobody need to trigger it it will run automatically every time there's a update in git job will run automatically it will create the development images and then it will deploy the development environment then using a browser you will 
connect to it and you will browse you will check the website all looking good if all looking good then somebody uh, from the jenkins team will manually execute this job you know what will happen when you run this job it will take those uh, stable code and deploy the production environment so this is what i want you guys to do jenkins team would be creating separate separate job you can also create a separate job for tagging in git right you can do something like this create one more job in jenkins to tag the code in git so in git you can create a tag you know you can search in google how jenkins can create a tag in git right so that that you can do that you can check and you can create a tag tag is something like this 1.0.1 1.1.2 right like that you are creating new versions of your software so then when you run the production you can actually also run the production as a parameterized build you will be able to pass the name of the image that you want to build so do that also all right so this is the project all about i don't know if you understood the project completely i mean don't worry at least uh, try to focus on technical part very well right now we will have a uh, better explanation later what the project was all about right i will i will tell you after we completed it so you must complete it right and this one is not uh, mandatory anybody here who who is into project management anyone who who is good in project management here uh, anybody who know jira or taiga you know i want one of you to take a 15 minute session on jira and taiga jira or taiga or any any project management tool that you know uh, to give everyone an idea about what is a sprint what is uh, what is stand up and uh, about some testing plans issue raising all those things anyone here can you give a 15 minute session to everyone anyone who know the project management basics or at least anyone who had worked on agile okay let's uh, talk about it later if nobody is there i can do it so uh, can uh, uh, who will lead this project can anyone come up anyone who want to do this project lead this project Come on, guys. You know the only thing what I don't understand is uh, <laughs> why nobody is coming up, right? I mean, uh, this is in your uh, right uh, when you learn. Also, uh, our uh, your learning is not just about uh, listening to the classes. It is all about uh, doing something. Even, right even when you and work also that is exactly what you would keep doing uh, you know, work as a team and there are many things to learn on that right uh, learning the technical things are not really completely sufficient especially for a devops role there are uh, many things and many uh, soft skills uh, also need need to be there right it, it's all about you know you don't need to be a technical giant to become successful you just need need a good team player and somebody who focus on the deliverables and not on the issues right so if anyone can okay usma no problem uh, yeah no worries so anyone else who want to uh, who is ready to take up this project let me know I really don't want to call out your names, guys. So that's why I'm asking. Uh, 
uh, hi basil i can lead this project but i need few info like uh, where we need to set up the environment our own resource or mm, we need to set up the environments uh, in uh, so when we talk about environment harbor will within harbor there are option to create different project so you will create one project for development one project for production so development will be one environment production will, and similarly in kubernetes when you run your software in kubernetes you will run in development environment and also in production environment in kubernetes also it can be split so so uh, lab need to be set up on aws only oh you mean yeah yeah it can be set up on aws yes and uh, you didn't learn kubernetes right away you are new to kubernetes yeah yeah i'm new to kubernetes I yeah, i'll learn so, it i'll check out the basic yeah and you don't need to uh, but you know uh, there would be there are people uh, within the project who are good at kubernetes so let them work on it so your responsibility would be mostly uh, not helping them with the technical practices which i hope uh, many people can do here right uh usma asa and you know there are many people who are experienced here uh, right and they can they can like yeah, can help and there are many people who can really help you with the technical aspect uh, asar right so uh, get help from them or you know just coordinate with them your major responsibility would be something like this uh, form the team that is what you will do the first thing on monday day after tomorrow form three teams three teams uh, and uh, assign a lead for each team and take a daily stand up every day uh, first five minutes right uh, alekia can you also support him uh, i'm not sure uh, basil okay uh, no worries you have some other uh, things next week i'll be busy so that's why okay. i'll be no worries so uh, uh, yeah uh, so first five minutes you will be taking the stand up for 10 minutes everyone can explain in a very high level where they are what work they completed what is pending what they worked on yesterday what they are going to work today and anything is stopping from them from doing that on a very high level without any technical words right let's let's not make them use any technical words but rather explain in a very high level so that everyone will understand what is going on so uh, all of you would be taking one minute maximum one minute don't take more than that to explain what you do did yesterday what you are going to do today and what is stopping you from doing that uh, explain these three things within one minute so first 10 minutes you will spend on the stand up abai so you will tell them right if somebody is asking any technical questions you tell them this is not the time right? let's finish the stand up first and then questions can be discussed later right so you will tell them and after the first 10 minutes you know you can you can have a uh, quick planning of the work that is pending right you understood that somebody is getting stuck somewhere so you will instruct this guy you know you are stuck here get help from this other guy so assign some person whom they can work together and get things moving so whoever got blocked there you know give them a hand in next 10 minutes you just make the plan right you don't again you will not discuss anything technical you would mention okay you are stuck here and who can help with this problem and then somebody who is ready to help with that problem let them work together, together and you know just uh, tie them up right that would be your responsibility mostly and uh, first 20 minutes you spent in that way only and no technical discussion should happen in the first 20 minutes and after 20 minutes you can discuss whatever you want right you can share your screens you can do whatever you want to right and uh, the friday is the last day <clears throat> i will be joining uh, at nine o'clock every day that means uh, by the end of the class i would be joining to take any pending questions or if you need any help uh, you know i would be joining for a coordination 
but you know uh, try to coordinate uh, each other and everyone please take equal responsibility and this project has to happen well and if this project i mean right i'm not insisting because it's not about me uh, you need to understand that it's it's none of these things are about me it's about this project must go well and for each one of your career you know this this would add a lot of value and it is your responsibility to make sure that the project goes well it has nothing to do with me it's nothing about me so make sure that the project goes well and get involved help each other make sure that the project happens right <clears throat> your responsibility is not to complete your work your responsibility is to identify what is breaking the entire project and lend some hands even though you belong to certain teams uh you know uh, it's it's all about the work is completed as per the schedule by friday it must be completed right so uh, i request all of you to, to take the equal uh, responsibility this is not responsibility of the project admin this is not my responsibility it is yours right and it's yours to accomplish and uh, believe me it will be worth it whatever time you spend it maybe you have to work you know, one hour extra or two hour extra maybe uh, a complete day you need to spend uh, to troubleshoot few issues and whatever you do next week it's completely worth it so uh, understand that and uh, let's let's start on monday and um, yeah abai i will send you all the mail ids and the project document i will email to everyone and uh, you know i will also create a separate meeting link so you would be using a different meeting link for uh, for the project sessions all right so we need to create uh, the team uh, for helper and kubernetes and docker right correct uh, one team for kubernetes one team for harbor yeah docker and uh, one team for uh, jenkins that is the most uh, you know real work happens in jenkins harbor is also something new so harbor is also kind of a bit difficult i wouldn't say difficult uh, there are some problems you will face on monday the harbor team but it's a quick fix actually but you know i just i want you to figure out the problem and then we will work on the fix uh, harbor has a little bit complexity kubernetes is very straightforward i believe it's you know any anyone who learned kubernetes it's a one day or two day work jenkins team you know you just do, you must do plan it very well and execute it uh, the only challenge is only thing that you don't know is how to connect to harbor actually it is docker login come on saying come on we used it's not a big challenge and also how to connect to kubernetes that is also not a big challenge uh, the planning is the right challenge i mean understanding why you are doing this is very important that we will be uh, right uh, once the project is completed i would take some time to explain uh, our actual strategies that what we wanted to accomplish okay uh, cool so any questions anyone basically is this our like uh, last class you said there will be one topic left which you will cover during the project right yeah pipeline there is something that is left you know which i will okay. cover probably on monday uh, you know any day when i get some sure you uh, know if, if there are not much questions i will uh, spend some time 15 minutes to complete that okay and basically if we have any question related to overall projects material or anything can we email you you can email me and i will be joining uh, daily i will be joining at nine o'clock and yes okay. you can email. okay thank you uh, put uh, abai in the loop for every any kind of communication about project sure uh this uh, um, yes. i don't know if uh 
you can I can show you later after this the meeting you can help me uh, figure out I have a, an error yesterday when I, I was reviewed the video I mean the the class for yesterday I don't know if you can help me we shouldn't take long yep yep we can discuss after after uh, after the session yes so sure. anyone else have any questions we can discuss or otherwise hi basil um, i yes, have one sir. question yeah the cron job is similar to paul scm uh yeah uh cron you mean build periodically and paul scm what are their differences right yeah cron jobs and different between paul scm yes correct uh, so uh so the paul scm is only different in only one one thing technical difference is that paul scm will not run the job if there are no commits made okay. by developers that is the only difference okay and the what about the cron jobs it will run anyway okay whether you know it, it it does not need to bother about github or any change in github if you set uh, the option uh, run periodically it will yeah. run anyway okay whether there Good. is a change in it or not it will run anyway policy yeah. will check the github before running if not changes it will skip it won't run okay got it thank you Okay. Yeah, search. Uh, I will make you a presenter. I think today's recording is going.